Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today a subject I really want to talk about is being money broken. Um, and I just coined this phrase because honestly when you're not taught anything about money, my parents didn't talk about money growing up, we just didn't see them pay bills like at the kitchen table or anything. And there's a lot of stigma that if you're white, you have money, you're privileged. And guys, it really just isn't the case. I grew up in a very poor community. Uh, we barely had money for food to put on the table. Uh, we didn't use welfare because that it was just not something, I don't know how to explain it. Like. Um, my mom, when my mom and my dad finally split up, my dad was in and out for a while there. Um, when we were in, uh, junior high in high school, he was a truck driver and he cheated on my mom and, um, I just didn't really see him a lot. Uh, my mom could not get welfare because... And at this time, she didn't even have a job, and they wouldn't give her welfare just because her and my dad were together, um, even though they were separated. So my mom had to go out and get a job. Uh, welfare was not really even an option for us. She couldn't even get food stamps for us four kids. So <clears throat> there is no privilege in the white community. Our white community was not privileged at all. Um, you worked hard for what you got, and if you didn't go out and get a job, then you did without. That's just how it was. That's That was the community, and you did not just sit around and um, do nothing because the community was very tight and small. Everybody knew everybody else's business. So there really wasn't room for failure in growing up. I mean, and it's really hard to, it's really hard to make people understand that when you're white and you grow up in a poor community, uh, they think, other races think that you are still privileged. We're not privileged. We didn't get food stamps. We couldn't get food stamps. We couldn't we couldn't get any housing assistance because there weren't programs like that available in our white rural community. And I try to I try to make other people understand and try to put myself in other people's situations to culturally uh, bring my own awareness up but it's not it's not always that way so when I say that I was money broken it's because we weren't taught about money we didn't have a lot of money and I didn't realize how poor we were until after we were in high school. We had to go out and get jobs to buy our own school clothes, literally, guys. And we took up summer jobs. We did detasseling. We baled hay. Uh, we walked the bean and mint fields and uh, de-weeded, basically, with a hoe or with our hands. And this was hard work. We were, you know, 12, 14 at the time uh, doing these odd jobs, babysitting jobs, whatever kind of job that we could get, we went out and found. And that was how we made money. We didn't get an allowance. We were too poor to get an allowance. No such thing. And our community, I mean, we didn't do drugs or anything like that. It's just a very poor rural uh, farming community really uh, that was it and when you're not taught good money habits you're not really taught anything about money in your 
early adulthood, you're not going to really understand the concepts of money and how to budget. Uh, those things weren't talked about. You didn't really even understand what a budget was. Then uh, you got money in your pocket and you bought the things that you need or the things that you wanted and that was your that that was your money interaction basically you got it you blew it you spent it and um, there really wasn't a whole lot of savings or anything so now I'm finding in my adulthood still living in a rural community uh, what that is like and it is exactly the same as we grew up um, out here the farming communities um, you work hard and you work hard for what you have nothing is given to you at all um, we don't seek housing assistance we don't seek food stamps or anything like that just for uh, being prideful and um, digging ourselves out, so to speak. Uh, many instances in my life, I found myself with no money at all, and you basically have to pick yourself up. You don't rely on anybody but you because you know that your family is poor just like you. And that realization, uh, it's hard, but it makes you who you are. It ingrains a sense of self, not only pride, but self-worth because you know how to be resourceful. You know how to dig yourself out. And that's what brings us to modern day right now for me. Uh, the de our debt-free journey, it's not about anybody else but getting out of debt and being more money conscious and really having to learn about money the hard way. Uh, money was not given to us. I've never had, you know, an allowance. Uh, nobody left me any money. We're poor. <laughs> We are poor white people, and there's a lot of us around. We're not privileged by any means. And honestly, the stereotypical people look at us and think that we have a lot of, we don't have a lot of money. We don't have a lot of things. Yeah, do we buy things on credit and we're in debt? Hell yeah, we do, just like everybody else. Um, and I don't want to live that life anymore. I want to have more in my savings. I want to be out of debt. I don't want to owe a lot of people a lot of money besides our mortgage because I'm not at a place in my life where I'm trying to impress the Joneses or being somebody that I'm not. I want to be financially stable, financially free of debt so that I can do more and I can be more conscious and be a good steward of my money. And I don't want to be broke the rest of my life. Growing up in poverty, I don't want to be that in my adult life because I've been there enough and I don't want to be here anymore. Um, so when I say money broken, it's the fact that everything I had to learn about money was I either read it, I either lived it, or um, I worked hard for it, for that knowledge. And now that I'm at a place in my life where I see it, I see the money habits that I have now, and I'm in a much better place to do whole lot more with it <sighs> because <clears throat> honestly in the future you can't rely on the government you can't rely on your family there really is only you to take care of yourself in the future 
um, we don't know if Social Security is going to be there. We don't know. Uh, yeah, we're paying a lot of money for something that may not exist in the future. So even saving for myself as I age and I get close to retirement age, will I have a whole lot? Probably not <laughs> because I started late in life. Um, it just wasn't something that was really ingrained that it was very important and that we needed to save for our future. This, these things weren't even talked about. So when I say money broken, um, it's there's many cliches or instances where that would totally fit. The fact that we weren't taught about money growing up, uh, we those those life skills were not even discussed in our poor white rural community uh, where communities and families really kept to themselves yeah we were a support unit but we weren't we didn't support each other in that sense um, which was kind of weird because you know growing up in the church a lot of it was fake. Um, you went to church. It felt like you went to church just to save face or to see what, I don't know, but there was so much, uh, what are they, what do you call that? Um, hypocrites. They talked about you behind your back when you weren't there. So, I don't go to church anymore. It doesn't mean that I don't believe in God or I don't believe in Jesus or anything like that. It's the fact that the hypocrites have defaced the look of or the function of Christianity for me. I don't need to go to church to believe in God and is it the fellowship that is needed? Yes, it is. But if it's fake fellowship, I don't want it because God and Jesus taught Christianity and about Jesus and about God for free. Walked all through Israel, you know, and didn't ask for money. Didn't have to give 10% of everything they made to the church, which I definitely don't agree on. Uh, charity starts at home. And do I... I don't know. It's... This is a hard thing. Like, people don't really talk about Christianity or money or certain... There are certain topics even political. They don't talk about it. We don't talk about government assistance and we don't talk about, you know, how much we're blowing, you know, going gambling or how much you, you know, waste on, you know, going to see the strippers or how much you spend on alcohol. So there are certain topics that people just really don't talk about. It doesn't make us um, any worse of a person than anybody else, but there are many things that we all need to change I guess is what I really want to get down to and for me being money broken has taken a lifetime to understand and to try to change and for me the Dave Ramsey plan has definitely reached out and has done that for us so I'm not as money broken as I was um there are aspects in my life where I honestly want to do better and want to be a better person, but don't always believe everything you see on stereotypes. Um, I'm a poor white person who lives in a rural community and I don't have a lot of money. Uh, right now we are living paycheck to paycheck to try to get out of debt. Does it suck? Hell yeah, it sucks so bad. But 
trying to be a better steward of our money and know that we're not trying to keep up with the Joneses anymore. There's nothing to prove in life. I'm 52 years old. I'm not in high school. I don't have rich friends. Uh, and for that matter, I don't have very many friends at all. <laughs> Just for the fact that I don't trust people and people will stab you in the back every chance that they get. So it's a lonely journey that we're on right now. And we're trying to do the best that we can with what we have. So is it taking a lot longer than I had expected? It is, and it's mentally and physically draining trying to dig yourself out of a financial mess. But stick with it and learn everything that you can about the deficit that you have and just try to be a better person towards everybody no matter what color they are because take the skin off we still look the same think about that